That's ChaseChaseWins.com coming to you for Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, fun day it is, and it's going to be a big one, guys. I cannot wait for this Sunday. Obviously, it's the 18th of April, and it's going to be a big day. As we've been telling you for the last few days, Jerry has a soccer game of the week. We've been telling you since Thursday when we posted this thing. Yeah, Thursday evening when we posted it. A bunch of people have already jumped on. They've already made their wagers, and they are locked and loaded, ready to win this one. As we told you, he had a game of the week last weekend, and it was a nice, big, easy winner. This one doesn't hold any weight to what this one's going to be. Last week, before that game of the week even went off, he was already zoned in on this game. Obviously, at that time, there was no line on it. There was no line until about Wednesday. Then he wanted to confirm some things. But the second he was ready, he locked this one in days ahead of time. That's how com How often do you see a game of the week or a month or a year locked in three, four days ahead of time? Think about that. Usually, no more than 24 hours. He's had this thing locked in three, four days ahead of time. That shows you how big he is on this game. We always put a profit guarantee on everything. You will win or you will get, your money will be made back up. We do not let you walk out of here without making money. You win or you get three days of all plays. That's daily premium and daily top plays. All sports, all plays for three full days. 50 bucks. You can't even buy a three-day all-sports pass for $50. You would have to spend $99. But this game's not going to lose. The game goes Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We are going to pull the purchase link down at 10.30 a.m., so you need to be signed up before then. Once, once 10.30 hits, you won't be able to purchase the play. Go to the website. You go to the purchase page. Just the very first tab up there. It says Soccer Game of the Week. You can't miss it. As soon as you make your purchase, boom, you have instant access to the play. You can log in. It's right there. Make your wager. And you've got it right there, so don't miss out on that. While you're at the site, go ahead and jump on an all-sports pass. Or if you just want Major League Baseball, just soccer, just NBA, just NHL, whatever you want, we've got what you need. Something small, you just start now. You want us to help you build that bankroll up so you can do something longer term, we've got you. If you're a more seasoned sports investor and you just want to get with somebody that's going to consistently make you money, We've got you. Go ahead and do it. While you're here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you are not already, we're happy that you're here. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. Obviously, we usually do a video every single day. There's only been one day this week that we have not. There's been a couple of days I haven't personally. Jerry took took over the reins one day. <clears throat> and then I, as, as I told everybody a couple of days ago, I would not be able to do a video for Saturday. That's why I gave out a couple of free plays the day before that because I just had some things going on. Plus, there was so much to do on Saturday as far as sports goes. Plus, already jumping ahead to Sunday because of how many things were going on with horse racing, NASCAR, MLB, NHL, NBA. Jerry's got soccer. He's got a premium play up as well at the site. So just a ton going on. I didn't have the time to do a video. But I wanted to make sure that I gave you one because I've been give, I've been, I knew I was going to get questions about one of these baseball games for Sunday. I knew it. One of them I didn't, I'm, you know, it kind of surprised me that so many people have asked me about it. One of them I knew they were coming, they've asked, so I figured, you know what, I'll give you a free play on it, or at least where my head is at, because I think it's going to be a great matchup, a great pitching, a great pitching matchup, but I really think there's a significant advantage on one side versus the other, and we're getting good value on it. So we're going to get into that in just a second real quick. Let's do a Saturday recap. Start of the day. Jerry had a play. It was a top play. Saturday morning, and he cashed it with ease. That's another top play winner, guys. Go back the last couple of weeks when we've started releasing top plays more and more because we had a period of time where top plays were only being released two, maybe three times a week. Now we're doing it six, seven times a week. There's days where there's multiple top plays. I did not personally have a top play on Saturday. Jerry had one Saturday morning. It was another soccer top play winner. Then he had a play at 3.30, I think it was 3.30 this afternoon, a premium soccer play, and it cashed for another sweep in soccer. A 2-0 and sweep to get everybody geared up and ready for an even bigger play on Sunday in his game of the week. But he has the game of the week, obviously. You have to purchase that separately unless you're on an all-access pass. If you are an all-access member or you purchase an all-access pass, you get those level games absolutely free, no extra charge. But he does have a premium play up. 
So congrats to all of the soccer clients on another 2-0 sweep with a top play winner picking up four easy units there. Then we get in over into mine. I did not have any premium plays in NHL or NBA. There just wasn't anything that met the criteria. I almost released one in the NHL. I did not like the goalie situation. There was a change this afternoon. I didn't agree with it. I didn't like it. And thank God, because if I would have still stayed with it, we would have lost. So thank God I pulled back on that. Released four plays in the MLB today. The only one that, again, we took Jacob DeGrom. And, again, I am going to continue to force that until they show that man some run support. Now, I had some people argue with me earlier today going, well, Jacob got run support and they didn't cover the run line. He didn't get run support. You can't wait until the very end of a doubleheader, which is only seven innings, bust out a few runs and think that he gets run support. What happens to the other six innings of play where you have the best pitcher in the National League going up against a pathetic hitting squad like the Rockies, somewhere like Coors Field, where with that lineup, with people like Francisco Lindor, just to name one, you cannot generate offense. Now, I get it. It's cold. They just had three foot of snow on the ground. That's why the game got postponed. I get it. I didn't expect a ton of offense. But you mean to tell me with a dominant lineup like the Mets, highlighted by a future first ballot Hall of Famer for sure in Francisco Lindor, with the best pitcher in the National League, if not in the game of baseball, you can't generate two to three more runs than one of the worst teams in the National League? It just goes to show you that the team doesn't know where their priorities are. Now, they're going to play on Sunday against the Rockies again in a full game. And you watch that team. Read between the lines of what I'm saying to you. doesn't matter the weather. It's still not going to be ideal weather, but it's Denver. It's, it's, it's not real baseball. But you'll watch the team be more aggressive on Sunday. You'll watch them put up offense. You'll watch them play like the team they should. They'll give their pitcher run support, and you will watch that team generate the type of offense that they should. Read between the lines of what I am saying here, guys. Read it. The Mets are going to generate offense on Sunday. Mark my words. If they don't, then the Mets have a hell of a lot bigger problems than not giving their pitcher run support. And it will it will come to a head before the season's over when they realize they're way over their payroll budget and they're not getting anything in return for it. But that was the loss that we took. We took the Cincinnati Reds. It was fairly low, dollar thirty-five in most spots, dollar forty in a couple. That was a win there that we took them against the, the Indians. They should have put it away a lot earlier. They really just every time they got into scoring position. They would not run the bases well. They really ran the bases poorly. It could have cost them the game. Luckily, it didn't, but it could have. But again, I'm going to say this again. Nobody knows this sport like I do in this industry, period. Every year we start it, what do we do? For the first couple of weeks, we might have one losing day. And then you're going to have some losing days sprinkled in for the next couple of weeks as teams finally settle in. Then you know, but see, that's what separates the men from the boys, because right now you might have some guys out there that are cherry picking these games because of the names going, oh, well, this is a good name. This is a good name. This is a good team. And they're winning right now. They're winning based off of pure guessing and just name recognition. When these teams settle in and the pitchers that are doing great right now go back to average or below average and the pitchers that are below average right now are getting no run support go to where I know they'll go, you'll watch these other handicappers be lucky to hit 45%. And that's I'm saying that'll be a miracle. And we'll be hitting 65 to 70% consistently like we do every single year, top play winner after top play winner. I mean, we're 8-2 and two on top plays in MLB, and we're just over two weeks into the season. Do the math on that. I'm not worried about a couple of losses. And any of my clients that have been with me in MLB before, they haven't batted an eye. But anyway, we won on the Cincinnati Reds. <clears throat> we also took the Milwaukee Brewers at minus $1.35. Some people actually got as low as uh, $1.25. They blew Pittsburgh out of the water. That was an easy win. We still have one game on going. It's a totals play, but I did not have any. Oh, and I also, as a members-only play for the YouTube clients, 
uh, the ones in the members. I released it to all member all levels of membership. Uh, I gave out the Houston Astros minus a dollar twenty. They ended up winning one to nothing. So that was another win there. So that would put you at three and one at this moment in time if you got that play as well. Still one play ongoing. The only other thing that was released is Rich did have a full horse racing card. Los Alamitos will go over what's there. I think he still has two races to go, but either way, he's going to be profitable. Race two, Los Alamitos, the pet plus 250 to win. We did hedge one, but he did put in there very clearly to bet a lower amount. It was all in the instructions, so that way you wouldn't have hedged a full unit, so good profit there. Race number three, Mavericks at plus 350, another winner. Race number four, Captain Scotty to win plus $1.25, another winner. And he's got um, a couple of races in between his next one. He's got race seven and eight. He's got picks on both of those. So either way, even if he were to lose both of those, it's going to be profitable. But he'll probably win both of them. I think he's going for a sweep of the board tonight. The only one I think he said that he was even remotely concerned about was race seven. But at race eight, he's very confident in. But either way, going to be a good day. So for all the horse racing and all access clients, congrats. But if you roll everything in, no matter what happens in these last couple of picks on horses and the one MLB pick, when you roll in what you did on soccer with a top play and a premium play winner, the horse profit made, and what we've done so far in MLB, another great day, tremendous profit turn, and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter your win-loss record. It doesn't matter, you know, losing here, losing there. It doesn't matter. If you turn profit, it's successful, and the more profit you turn, the better off the day is. That is all we care about here. We don't care to give you a win-loss record that looks pretty. We care to profit. We care that at the end of every day, you have more money to your name than you did when the day started. And if the services that you're dealing with don't care about that and that alone, you're with the wrong service. That should be the only thing they care about. Let's touch on a couple of free plays. The one that everybody's asked me about that I knew was coming was the Sunday match. Well, of course, I knew everybody's also going to ask me about the Cubs and the Braves because they get Sunday night baseball. I'm excited. Kyle Hendricks should be back. He has been a day-to-day -day thing because he was dealing with some arm stiffness. He was dealing with some issue in one of his pectoral muscles, too. That's kind of sub subsided. All the information that I'm getting, and I have a lot of people within that organization, obviously still being a season ticket holder there, um, I, I've, I'm close with a lot of people within that organization, and they have no doubt that Kyle Hendricks will start the game for the Cubs on Sunday. Now, if anybody saw, looks like the Braves, I don't know if they're virtue signaling here or what, but they called up a 30 six-year-old reliever who has not played in the major leagues since like 2004 or something. They went to the geriatric league to pick this one up. What the fuck are the Braves thinking? What are they doing? I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, people have asked me, what do you think about this? I think the Braves are hitting well. I think Acuna is in a league of his own batting for MVP status this early in the season. There's nobody batting like him. Look what he did on Friday. And if anybody and all the people that asked me about the game before it started on Friday, I told you that the Braves would win that game. He he had an infield ground ball that never made it past the shortstop and got a double off of it. If that's not perfection in base running, there has never been a such thing. Hats off to you, Acuna. I don't even care that you did it against Baez, my favorite player. I don't care that you did it against my Chicago Cubs. That is what I like to see. That is beautiful, beautiful baseball. But anyway. The Cubs crushed them on Saturday, and everybody's asking, what do you think about the Cubs on Sunday? Do you think they'll win? Again, the Cubs as a lineup right now, their, their batting average is the lowest in baseball. Maybe second. No, it's actually the lowest. It is the lowest in baseball as of right now. I was thinking they might be second lowest because Milwaukee hasn't generated a lot of offense, but they've still generated a little bit more. Um but again, the Cubs also haven't had the best weather at Wrigley, even though it's not been snowing, there haven't been any downpours, it's not warm. So, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt, give it another 30 days, that lineup will start rolling, there's too much talent for them not to. 
pitching wise, their bullpen has been one of the best in baseball numbers wise so far, which has blown my mind. Kimbrell's done great. I'm happy for him. I don't think they'll be able to sustain it because I don't think the bullpen's that good. That scares me on Sunday because Kyle Hendricks, even though he's one of the better pitchers in the game because he can do things that other people can't as a low MPH pitcher. He doesn't throw very hard, but he throws shit you just can't hit. He is the closest thing to Greg Maddox that there has ever been. And Greg Maddox is one of the best all-around pitchers I think the, the game ever saw. So Kyle Hendricks, the professor, him coming back in, I like it. I am nervous to think of what he's gone through in his days off, not feeling, not being up to par, going out and having to throw against, even though Albies is out and stuff like that, just the fact that you have to go up and, and play people like you know Swanson and Acuna, that scares me. It does. This is a game that I could see. I want you to read between the lines on this one as well. I don't have faith in Hendricks right now against someone like Swanson or Acuna. <laughs> and I have no faith in the Braves pitching whatsoever. Is Their bullpen's awful right now. Their starting pitcher tomorrow is going to be completely hopeless unless the Braves are just cold at the plate. I mean, the Cubs are just cold at the plate. So you roll all those things in, what do you get? You get a lot of hits, and you get at a hitter-friendly ballpark like Wrigley, where at this very moment, probably going to get about 15 mile an hour winds going out towards left field. Read between the lines of what I'm telling you. Offense generated hits, possible wind blowing out towards Lake Michigan. I'm, I'm spelling it out for you right there. Otherwise, unless we just get an absolutely low line from God on the Cubs, I'd stay away from the side on that one. But I just told you what I thought about the game. Other game that I've been asked about that I don't really have a play in is um, the Nationals. You've got Strasburg versus Baumgartner going in. Two pitchers that I think overall in their career are about equal. But I, t I told you back in 19 when I was at the winter meetings, when I was there the day Strasburg got signed, I thought he was a better buy and worth more money than Garrett Cole. And I stand by that. I still think he is. I don't think that Baumgartner will ever be what he was in San what he was in San Francisco will never happen in Arizona. I don't think he's even truly found a rhythm in Arizona yet. He's had some good outings, but you know, ever I mean, Jesus Christ. Sun shines on a dog's ass every once in a while, doesn't it? This is a game where I think the money line is way too high. But if you look at two pitchers that are deadlocked even career wise, Let's say they have a deadlocked even game. What lineup do you trust more? That's not even a question. Bumgarner has nobody hitting, you know, in defense of him. He is a good hitter. He is one of the better hitters in the National League when it comes to pitching. I, if there was any pitcher in the National League that I would want to see step up to the plate for me, it'd be Bumgarner. But you think he's going to be able to hit Strasburg? No. And they have one of the best lineups in the game. Schwarber. Bell, Soto. So again, the Nationals should be able to rake in this game because I don't think Bumgarner sees past six, and I and I'm, that's being generous. And as long as they're generating hits, I see the Nationals walking away with this game. But that's not the free play. These are just th things that I've been asked about. The Dodgers on the money line at minus a dollar twenty, you can get it at a dollar fifteen in a couple of spots. You have Blake Snell versus Trevor Bauer. This is pretty simple. You look at the overall talent at the bats, who has the who has the more talented team? It's the Dodgers. Is it by a mile? No. Who's the more aggressive team? By a mile is the Dodgers. And who wants it more as a pitcher? Is it Blake Snell with a new team, or is it Trevor Bauer that wants to be the biggest asshole in the game? And I like that. It's Trevor Bauer. So what we have to look at is if Blake Snell pitches like himself, the Dodgers are going to have a long day against him. But we know that Trevor Bauer is going to make it difficult for the for the Padres, period. So I think that even if you go out there and have a very low scoring game through five, six, seven, whatever it is, you've got to look at when the bullpens take over. And both these bullpens are somewhat depleted at this point. Going into Sunday, they need to kind of you know get their day off that's coming up just to kind of reset. You've got to look at who's going to be the most aggressive. Because whoever's going to be the most aggressive will be able to attack the bullpens if it comes down to that. And I'm always going to have faith in the Dodgers over the Padres, who uh, 
are not a fully healthy lineup. They're missing one of their main guys. And truth be told, even when they had him, they just have not been aggressive this year. I told you at the beginning of the week that, a, that not being aggressive it is as what has cost them the games that they lost. They have gotten more aggressive just like I told you they would. They're still not swinging the bat like they should, and I think that is what will be their Achilles heel to potentially getting swept by the Dodgers. So right now, because the line is so small, and, and rightfully so, the line is accurate, but if you're going to give me the Dodgers minus $1.20 with the most hungry pitcher in baseball, the one that has the most to prove even though he's coming off of a Cy Young year, he wants another one. A full 162-game season, full rotation of starts, everything to prove you cannot put the COVID season against me and say I never deserved it. Trevor will be in the running for the Cy Young again. He may not win it. I think DeGrom could win it, you know, for, for, for what, a fourth time? DeGrom, or third time. I think it's fourth time. No, twice. He didn't get it the third. Okay, yeah, so third time. I think he could get it again. But Trevor Bauer's going to be in the mix. No doubt about it, unless he's not healthy. That, and then who's going to be the more aggressive, you know, nine-man rotation? I'm always going to go with the Dodgers until the Padres show and they become aggressive like the team we know they can be and like they will be later on in the season. They're just trying to find that sweet spot. You don't find your sweet spot against the Dodgers. You don't find your sweet spot against the best team in baseball. Give me the L.A. Dodgers. I'll lay the dollar twenty. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm not. I'm not scared to admit it. This is the right pick here. Blake Snell is going to have to pitch the best game that he's pitched in the last year, and he's going to have to do it against the best team in baseball. And not only that, he's going to have to do it with a pitcher on the other side that wants to mow his lineup down as quick as they step up to the plate. You're going to give me a dollar twenty with the Dodgers against anybody at this point. I'm almost willing to blindly take it. But all the numbers do it. And when you also throw in the bullpen, right now there's two. I mean, you basically got two more arms to work with on the side of the Dodgers. One being a true middle reliever that could mow down a couple of full innings for you. And you also have two closers versus one dedicated closer that usually can only give you one to three outs. You have a closer going in with the Dodgers or supposed to go in that could run you two full innings if he needed to. So running down a few batters won't be anything big for him. Give me the Dodgers minus $1.20. Read between the lines on everything else I told you guys because it will make you some money. Go get on the game of the week, and we'll see you in the winner's circle. See you guys.